Last time we were talking bees on the channel, we were talking with Andrew here about swarm management and we found some swarm cells. So today is all about dealing with swarm cells in your hive and how you can go about splitting the hive and starting a new nuke. Andrew, how are you? Beautiful. Oh, it's started already. <laughs> So talk us through what you need first, Andrew. What have you assembled in front of yourself? Okay, Tim. So we've established that that hive is going to swarm. So we want to stop them from swarming. And to stop them from swarming, we're going to do a uh, what's called a, a walkaway split. There's a few different versions, but I'll show you one of the easiest way. We have a timber nuke. So a nuke box. So this is a timber mini hive, which only uh, allows five frames to be put in there. Because when you're uh, creating a nuke, you want to reduce the amount of space because heat management is one of the biggest issues with beekeeping. You want them to be nice and tight so they can actually work it, so they don't have to warm up the rest of the hive. So a five frame nuke is ideal. Uh, we also have, this is also a core flute nuke. This is one of those Nuke Master core flutes. Nukes, they are probably one of the best, well, I would say the best ones on the market. Um, they're double insulated, and you can also use this if you don't have a timber one, but a timber one will always be better because it's got better insulation. Um, if you don't have a nuke, timber or core flute, you can use a normal hive. So an eight frame or a 10 frame, ideally you'll want to reduce it as well, which I can show you a little bit later. But let's assume that we have a timber nuke and we'll work with this one and we'll produce a walkaway split. We will open this hive up so I do remember and I know where those swarm cells were and I've also marked them on on the um, on the frame so that will make it a little bit easier for me you just scratched an X on the frame didn't correct you? or you can use a text there and, and write something on there so we'll put our little nuke next to us like this we'll open her up and this one is one of our new versions where this is really exciting it's fully vented so it already has an inbuilt vent in the bottom, which helps the airflow uh, and just makes it a little bit easier, especially in summer. Alrighty, here we go. Take off a box. We'll put it, oops, move this out of the way. Um, you don't want to be in front of your beehive directly because you get in, the, in their flight path. That's why, as you can see, this is the flight path. I'm just moving this to the side. And now I know that it's in the bottom box. So you can go through the, uh, the, the whole uh, top, well let's go through the top one just in case they've made more queen cells, because they can make more queen cells as well. So this shouldn't take long, okay, I don't see any queen cells, we'll pop this to the side and we'll rush through this one. So this is how you do a very quick normal inspection, yep, no queen cells, no queen cells, bang. So as you can see these ones are getting a little bit upset. And they're getting upset for a reason. Because they've got swarming cells, they know that they need to get out of that hive in the next few days. So they are protecting their brood and the swarm and, and the queen. Um, so in those sort of conditions, bees can become a little bit more protective. It's um, like walking into an awkward family Christmas, isn't you it? You got it. Every family Christmas. Uh, I mean, some family Christmases, yes. Um, so we're looking. Queen cells. No queen cells. As you can see, when I'm inspecting uh, frames, I'm always holding them over the top of the, the hive. So if there is a queen and she falls in, she'll fall into the hive. If I was doing this and she fell down there, we could lose her. So bang. Yep. At the same time, I'm trying to find and see if, there is, if, if, if I can see the queen. If I can, great. If I can't, great. I'm not even sure whether she'll be here. If it is after day 14, um, she will be gone. If it's before day 14, she could still be in there. Bang, put them back, back, back in the same order. Last one in. So what we'll do is we'll probably end up using some of the resources from this top box as well. Um, but we'll be taking the swarm cells from the bottom box. So off we go. Again, important back on our lid. And Give him another couple of puffs. This almost gets them stoned, so it's a little bit equivalent. There. We've got our nuke ready. Alrighty, so if you have a look here, those X's are still there. So bang, one, 
bang too, that's where the queen cells are, but I'll still go through the whole hive in case they made more queen cells since the last time we were here. So normally they'll do anywhere between uh, two and about ten queen cells. About four is normal, uh, but it will vary. So we'll pop this one over here. Bang. So when you're doing a, a split, whether it's walk away or, or otherwise, um, you normally need to have three frames of brood, so babies, open brood, closed brood, um, so larva, eggs and so on, and then two frames of resources, and two frames of resources is honey and bee bread and pollen, and that should be normally sufficient. Okay, so here we go, number one, number two, see that? And at the same time here, we've got heaps of eggs, heaps of brood. So all these girls will be born shortly. So that's the first frame that goes in the nuke? Correct, in the center. So all these girls, they are nurse bees. So nurse bees always go with brood. They look after the brood and they'll always go with it. It's like big mama bears. So that's number one. Any cells, no cells. No cells, yep. So the other thing to remember when you're doing this is that if the queen has flown out of the main um, hive and she's not there anymore, assuming that they've got eggs and, between, eggs and larva between one and three days, they can produce an emergency queen. So I'm also looking to make sure that I'm not putting the queen in there, because if I put the queen in there, she will kill those uh, swarm cells. But I don't see any, which is good. You can do this with them, they don't mind. So nothing in there. So this is our second number three cell. There. So that's a nice big one. That's probably compared to, a, there we go, compared to a, 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 a hive tool. About 20 mil, 25 mil. So that's quite a reasonable cell. They, they can go up to about 30, 35 mil. The bigger the cell, the better, because it means it'll be a stronger queen. All right, so that's one, two. Now we're having a look. Uh, here we go. We've got nectar, we've got pollen. We've got some drones. Uh, maybe. Let's see what else we got. I want to put in probably the strongest resources we can give them. So you're looking for the strongest frame of food? Now Correct, so the most the... amount of food. I think we had a lot of chunkers over here. So what we'll do is, is this, this the one? It was this one, yep. So this big full frame of honey. So we'll pop that one in there. So that's number two. Uh, let's have a look. This one uh, we got a spare one over here. Uh, no, this one's got more in it. So number three. Oh, it's actually number four. And now what we want to do, if we have a spare frame of eggs or brood, we can pop that one in there as well. But at the moment, because we're just early in spring season, it doesn't look like it. So what I'll do is I'll just leave two frames of brood in this instance to make sure that that hive is actually quite well equipped as well. Because you can take too much out of the parent hive, can't correct, you? Correct, correct. Uh, if it's later in the season, it's not a huge issue. So, more honey there. Um, but if it's early in the season, it can become an issue. So now that we have put in our five frames, there's another trick to it. Well, it's not a trick, it's what you need to do. At the moment, there's bugger all bees in there. So what we need to do is we need to give them a few more bees. So we do this this way. We grab a, a frame out of here. We'll have a look, making sure the queenie isn't there. Queenie's not there. And you mark your queens to make them easier to see? Um, when I find them, I do. Sometimes I don't see queens for oh, six, seven inspections. In that case, I don't. So we shake the bees. One. I can see there's heaps here. Oh, come here. Where did I put that? There it is. We'll go here. We'll go, there's a few bees here, no queenies, no queenies, two, let's find some more here, 
Oh, there's a log here. Again, no queen. Are you there? Where are you? Can't see her. No, 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 no. Three. Oh, that's a nice one. Look, Queenie, Queenie, Queenie. Where are you? I love you, and I love you, and I love you, and you. Just remember, you need to be 25% crazy when you start beekeeping, and that increases to about 85% once you've been beekeeping for a few years. There, that, that, we got that. So now we're gonna close this one up. So as opposed to before, we were actually spreading our frames all over the place when we were checkerboarding. In this instance, we want to keep them all together because now the girls are going to have to get back into working mode and fix up everything to make sure that the brood is being looked after, the eggs are being laid properly. So let's do that. I've got a few spare frames here. Because we are taking five frames into the nuke, we need to replace five frames. If you have frames which have been drawn, like this, and you know they're healthy, so they're from your hives and, and uh, not any other ones. We don't mix between hives, uh, or especially between apiaries, because it can cause uh, disease. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know why, but after 20 years, I still keep counting to eight. Okay, we'll grab this little sucker. We'll pop her over here, like that. And, what I might do is we'll do push them together Blech. like that. Them thing like that. And it's also getting a little bit chilly now because we later in the day. And bees are like humans. Weather conditions and temperatures are very similar. If it's getting muggy and humid, they get they can get naki just like we would. If it's getting windy, they can get narky. So these empty frames, I'm putting them on the side. If I was checkerboarding, I'd put them somewhere in the middle. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got eight there. Lid. Bang. Like this. Uh, we'll put on a little M lock. Like that. So now, we shook our bees from some of those frames. So normally what we want to do, especially if the frames are totally full of bees, that's the ideal situation. That's where you shake four frames or full frames. These ones, again, it's early in the season, so they're not totally full. So we'll just collect them and we'll just drop some in there. Got more here. Where else? Oh yeah, we got some here. Bang. We will close this little nuke up. So tighten it up. Thank you very much. Put our lid on. So a colony can effectively survive from as few as, as 2,000 bees, two to 3,000 bees. It can actually uh, be rejuvenated. It takes a little bit of work, but it can be done. When we do this, kind of split, there'll be about 5,000 bees, maybe 7,000 bees in there. And when we are shaking it, what happens is we've got brood in there. And when we shake those bees, you have to remember that the girls are really, really smart and they always look after their own. So all the nurse bees will automatically start looking after the brood. And the foragers, they will go back to their own hive. So. There we go, we close it up, bang, bang, a little bit tighter, so tight. So what will happen now, I'll just move these. So what happens now is we'll put our little nuke here, we'll leave that there. You don't have to take it to another suburb or another house or anything else like that. You can leave it next to there and start them growing from there. What will happen now is all the foragers will go, I don't like this, this is the wrong place. So they'll come out the front here and they'll fly back to the original hive. And again, because the nurse bees always look after the brood, they will stay in there. 
and even from tomorrow, new bees will start being born because we've got the capped brood and uncapped brood. So all of a sudden, every single day, there'll be more and more bees and foragers will be promoted. So they'll go out and get nectar and pollen and they will start growing this out. In the next week, probably, the queen will be born. Once the queen is born, which is on day 14, um, she will go and find the other queen cells. She will use her stinger. It's one of the only times that queens use their stingers. And she will kill the other queen cells. So she'll destroy them, um, just like on Game of Thrones. It's like wed red wedding on crack. It's very, very brutal. Um, and then what happens is um, she will lay back for a couple of days and go, I'm going to work out a bit, get those muscles going. Once she get those muscles going, um, she will go on what's called a mating flight. So she will take anywhere between 10 and 40 drones. Drones are the boys. And she'll go, alrighty girls and boys. Actually, alrighty boys, there's no girls there. Let's go, we're going to go and party. And they will fly out and they will go to what's called a drone congregation area, a DCA. A drone con congregation area is a uh, geographically specific spot, so it's in the same place every year. It can be above a river, it can be above a football field, and it'll be between 10 and 30 meters above the ground. And in that area, all the queens in the area will bring 10 to 40 drones with them, and they'll be getting ready to get mated. So all of a sudden, we've got 100 queens, 400 drones, it's big party time and the, the queen needs to mate with at least 10 to 30 drones to be properly mated. So what happens is uh, the drones have really big eyes so they can actually see the, the queen and they will go and chase after her and they will mate with her and as soon as they've mated with her the unfortunate thing is that the penis gets pulled out, they fall to the ground and they die and that's it, that's the end of the drone. And she does this between 10 and 30 times. So she's a pre pretty tired girl at the end of this. After that, she comes back to the hive and assuming that she hasn't been eaten by a bird or, or, or someone else, um, she will go back in. She'll hang out for a few days um, to actually mature that sperm. Um, so it, it starts working uh, with the ovaries properly. And after about a week, she will start laying eggs into, into the cells. So first of all, she'll lay uh, one or two eggs because she's not experienced and they won't be centered. And then after about a week, she's got the of it and every single egg will be perfectly centered, centered and standing up. And once she's mated properly and the conditions are ideal, a queen bee can lay up to 2,000 eggs a day. Okay, so this is through spring and summer and she can do that effectively for up to three years without huge problems. Um, so they are very, very busy and they can go through um, over those three years and after that the colony continues and then the cycle takes over. If they don't have enough room the following season or the season after that, they'll do the same. They'll try to swarm and continue moving on and on. Um, the disadvantage of swarming is that once a queen goes and gets mated um, in the wild, in a DCA, uh, you don't know the genetics you're getting. So if she mates with drones which have angry genetics, um, all of a sudden all the babies out of that queen will become at least 50% angry. And this is where you've got to weigh up whether it's worthwhile keeping that queen uh, or whether you contact us to, to help you out and then we can have uh, what are called uh, F1 uh, queens which are uh, genetically superior and you can put them back in and have a happy colony. So that's about it from uh, this walk away split. Again, there's a few different methods of, of doing it. This is probably the simplest one, especially for people who aren't experienced. Um, and we will show you about three other ways of actually doing this uh, on another episode. But for the time being, we're going to let the girls sleep, look after the babies, and they'll do for tonight. What do you reckon, Tim? All right, Andrew. Well, you're doing some biosecurity, mate. I'll remind everyone to subscribe to the channel or they miss out on great resources like this. And you never know what you're going to get with Andrew. Today, we've got a fantastic lecture on bee promiscuity. <laughs> Catch you next week, guys. See you, guys.